So firstly, I just want to say a big thank you to Mex at the People's Palace Discord for notifying me about the situation. It should also be noted that I'm going to omit a few names here and there because some people have asked to remain anonymous. But let's talk a little about the parties involved. Now, the first one is Rocco Solano. Now, he is a two-time FISM winner and apparently the only American to have actually won it twice. Now, you might not be familiar with Rocco's name, but you're probably familiar with one of his big products called the D-Lite, which is where you produce light from your fingertips. Now, while Rocco's been around since about the 80s, Magic Flicks, on the other hand, is almost brand new. It launched just last year, around August. Now, I don't know the exact date, but the launch party was something that was advertised and promoted over social media and that took place in August. Although I do know that the business itself was founded and registered back in April 2018. Now Magicflix is a streaming service that shares magic tutorial videos from a bunch of different magicians teaching a range of effects along with interviews and performances. Magicflix was founded by two people, Warren Irwin, who is a hedge fund manager, and a magician by the name of Stefan Vanell, which I could be mispronouncing so I apologise in advance. Now technically, Magicflix is actually a division of something called C28 Global Media Inc. I wasn't aware of Stefan Vanell before this, so I did a little bit of research on him and it turned up some old DVDs of him teaching card tricks. And I also found a page about him in The Supernaturalists, which was a show put on and developed by Chris Angel. Once I found that out, it made sense to me as to why Chris was actually present at the Magic Stream launch party. Now, when the launch party happened, I believe it was Magic Live last year, apparently it was a pretty lavish affair from what I've heard. You had big top names in Magic advertising for Magic Flicks, including Rocco Solano. You can see a few videos online where he's actively wearing a Magic Flicks branded shirt, talking to people about it, and he's even got a video with Chris Angel where he's directly promoting Magic Flicks to the camera with Chris next to him. There is even a promo code called Rocco, which gets you one month of free access to Magic Flicks. Now, whether or not that code still works, I don't know. However, in December of last year, that's where things begin to take a bit of a turn. A message suddenly pops up on Rocco's Instagram feed. To all my Magic friends around the world, I would like to make this public announcement. As of December 10th, 2019, I am no longer involved with MagicFlicks.com. Over the last 30 days, I have sent email requests to Magicflix to take down my personal content that's still up there on the platform today. Magicflix still owes me for unpaid salary, content provider agreement, and a promotional code agreement. So I did a little bit more digging and I found another statement from another magician named Perry Maynard. This is a public notice to let all my friends in the magic community know, as of December 10th, 2019, that I'm no longer involved with Magicflix.com. Once I found out that a few key executive offers of the Magic Flicks company did not have the same high moral business practices that I believe in, it was time for me to leave the company. As of today, Magic Flicks still owes me thousands of dollars of unpaid salary, which they refuse to pay me because they say they're out of money. I have been receiving a lot of emails and phone calls from magicians from around the world asking me what is going on with the company over the last 45 days. Since I am no longer with that company anymore, I do not know what to tell you, my friends. If you are one of the many content providers for Magic Flicks who have not gotten paid either, I would suggest you call Magic Flicks headquarters to have them answer any and all of your questions. So based off of these, you could assume that Magic, Magic Flicks isn't doing so well. Now, there's no way that I could prove that one way or another without having actual access to Magic Flicks' financial records, which I don't think they're going to divulge. I did note, however, the last thing that was uploaded to Magic Flicks was back on January 6th, and that was an interview with Greg Wilson, and it only had 29 views, so it doesn't look too promising. On top of which, I found a lot of kind of middling reviews of the service online. In any case, I wanted to make sure I had as much information as possible going forward with this, so I contacted Rocco, I contacted Perry, and I contacted Magic Flicks. Now, I never heard anything back from Perry. I assume he's cut all ties with the company and doesn't want to talk about that, which is absolutely fine. I heard back from Rocco almost immediately, but I want to touch on his statement shortly because I want to deal with Magic Flicks' statement first. Now, they responded to me within about 24 hours uh, saying that everything is fine, and they gave me their statement. Now, it just so happens that this statement is also a statement they made on their Instagram page, which reads as follows. On January 17th, 2020, Magicflix was made aware of social media posts by former contractors whose contracts were terminated in November 2019. These individuals made certain comments about the company despite not being in contact with its operations for nearly two months. We feel that the comments were inappropriate and have asked that the post be taken down. We will address the individuals directly and, in accordance with company policy, 
will not be making any further comment publicly on this matter. We would like to assure our family of valued content providers, subscribers and colleagues that the company is fully operational and funded as we strive to be the best source for magic online. If you have any further questions, please reach out to a member of our team. We're always glad to talk magic. So according to that statement, we could assume that the contracts for Rocco and Perry were terminated in November. Now, this is all the communication that I've had from Magic Flix. I have contacted them again to ask about things that we're about to talk about and have heard radio silence. My assumption is that that is because they've said we will not be making any further comment publicly on this matter, which I don't think is a great thing to say, but that's in my opinion. Like I say, I contacted everyone. Rocco gets back to me. Uh, he says that he's okay, but then he shares with me a text chain conversation that he has had with Stefan Vidal, in which Stefan says the following. I swear I'm coming now. I'm going to teach you proper manners, you fucking... Hmm. You just woke up my girlfriend again. I'm coming in my car now, coming to you. I'm going to teach you some manners, you fucking asshole. I'm seven minutes away. Jumping in the car, I am going to teach you respect, you fucking piece of shit. A few more messages of this ilk happened, and then... Stephen Vanell turned up at Rocco's house and physically assaulted him and in Rocco's words choked him. So after hearing this I verified that Rocco is okay and he is. I also then heard from someone else who was there at the time and was willing to confirm the events that actually happened. As well as that confirming other instances of other magicians not having been paid by Stephen and other magicians making derogatory comments against Stephen and his business practices. Now while I've got proof of these messages and people have said these things, I do have to state this is hearsay and people can Photoshop, you know, SMS messages and things together. But I don't see why Rocco has any reason to lie about these events. And I don't see why other people would verify these events if it didn't actually happen. Now, as well as this, I also reached out to other people to ask if they've had problems with the company Magic Flix, not specifically Stefan, just Magic Flix itself. Uh, and one big creator told me that they haven't had any problems with Magic Flix and it's been absolutely fine on their end. So to me, this looks like it could be a very personal thing between the president of Magic Flix and Rocco as opposed to a direct issue with Magic Flix itself. Again, I could be wrong at this point, it is just speculation. Now, as I said previously, I reached out again to Magic Flix. I informed them of the situation, but I've heard absolutely radio silence back. So I have, I have nothing else that I can kind of input on this, but I wanted to at least make this video to talk about it. But what do you guys think about this? Do you think it's something that's being over-exaggerated? Do you think Magic Flix is in trouble? Have you had experience with Magic Flix, positive or negative? Please let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to hear your thoughts and opinions. If I get any updates to the situation from Rocco, Magic Flix, or any other magicians, I will fo do a follow-up video talking about that where possible. So if you want to see that, feel free to subscribe and put notifications on. Otherwise, just wait for it to surface somewhere. But other than that, guys, I genuinely hope you are all well and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you later.